Hello newcomers, this is Chris and this is going to be my Westworld Episode 2 Chestnut Review. We have a new perspective from the guest point of view, we have Maze and some other androids starting to have memories, becoming sentient, and we have the man in black looking for a maze? Alright, so let's jump right in, and this episode did not fail to disappoint. As I mentioned last week in the episode 1 review, I wanted to see a little bit more as far as the perspective of the guests, and this time we got exactly that. We got two new guys coming in as guests on the train. We got to see their perspective from them arriving to the Westworld facility. They get off the futuristic train. Apparently everybody has their own attractive host that they can hang out with for a little bit. They get their own wardrobe closet and then they get to actually walk through the door and get on the actual train that takes them into the park. So I thought that was very cool to see that and how they enter the park and what their experience is like. But we also got two very different guests, you know, apparently a couple co-workers, William and his friend. And I got a feeling that William's going to be kind of a hero in our story. And I'm going to go ahead and say it now that his friend's probably going to be the first casualty. Now it was also interesting to note that when William was turning down his host, which I'm not sure why anyway the point being he was asking about the guns in the room and said are they real and she said real enough but she did say that you can't kill anything you're not supposed to so that may play into a little bit about what's going on with the man in black and why he basically seems to be unharmed by actual bullets so in this episode we certainly dig deeper into human morality as we see the androids start to become sentient have memories of old programming and it really actually scares them they're starting to have emotion we're starting to see that with Dolores and Maze but I kind of compare this to Game of Thrones and the White Walkers if you're a Game of Thrones fan and watch videos on this channel about Game of Thrones, you know that I've brought up in the past about White Walkers and do they have the right to exist since they were basically created, mistake or not, and this is kind of what this reminds me of, you know, do these androids now have a right to exist since they were created, wasn't their fault they were created, and we have man playing God, and now they're becoming sentient, they're becoming aware, and I knew Bernard has something to do with it, I said that last week, I thought so because in the opening we heard his voice talking to Dolores and telling her the straight up truth about what's going on there. And of course, in this one, we find out that he's having secret meetings with Dolores. Somehow he is involved in stepping up this, you know, Operation AI. And at this point, I would guess that it's likely due to the picture he was staring at in episode one. Because again, remember, we saw the security guy ask him, you know, do you have kids at home? And he said no. And of course, later on, he was staring at a picture of a kid. I'm going to presume that's probably his son, probably killed somehow in the real world. And he's trying to make up for that somehow through this park. So Bernard has this conversation and he lets Dolores stay in the park. And of course, her daily routine is starting to change a little bit. She's now waking up during the night and walking out to the field. Dolores starts having nightmares with dire wolves of everybody dying. She sees all the dead people in the streets. It's probably a past program. Perhaps it was from last week when they wrote the mini story to kill everybody off so they could pull those 200 androids out to give them inspections before they decommissioned two of those, including Dolores' old father. So the wolf represents something. We see William and his friend, you know, start to experience the park. Apparently his friend's been there quite a few times and he's kind of the uh, rich snobby asshole and he is more of a pure character. Of course, he picked the white hat, you know, coming into the park, turned down his host and went to the bar. And so I'm thinking he might be some type of hero here later on down the road when this gets deeper into the story and we start seeing the Android Rebellion. Then of course we see the man in black again and he is back at it. He came across a guy being hung and he saved his life by killing everybody else. And he takes him to apparently what was his own home, his little village, and kills everybody there to get the information about this maze that was carved on the inside of this guy's scalp from last episode. And the question is, why would somebody carve a maze on the inside of somebody's scalp? So that means somebody in the corporation, whether that's Bernard or Dr. Ford or somebody, had this plan in mind altogether. Obviously in these days of the Old West where there's cowboys and Indians fighting and that type of thing, you have scalpings going on. Somebody knew that at some point, somebody would come across that maze essentially printed on the inside of somebody's scalp. That of course goes into deeper questions of what the hell is going on at the corporate level. And the little girl told him something to the effect of you'll find the maze where something happens and then where the snake lays its eggs as far as the entrance to this maze, whatever this maze is. So apparently somebody is controlling her with her programming and knew that he would come across her at some point to give him the information to find this damn maze. Now, the interesting thing here is that they noticed the man in black this time. So last week we were speculating, do the people that run the park even know about him? Is he a human? Has he been coming there for 30 years, meaning the park? Did he mean Dolores' house? He mentioned he paid a lot of money to come there. 
but there's still questions about that because he can't be hurt by real bullets. But I think he obviously ties into Maze, who was one of the main characters in this story because she starts having nightmares after Dolores tells her the Shakespearean line, these violent delights have violent ends, and that is part of a Shakespearean quote from Romeo and Juliet. So when Dolores whispered that to Maze in the street, that seemed to trigger Maze's own memories and therefore nightmares. And then of course she passed that on to Clementine about how to get out of a nightmare by counting backwards from three, three, two, one, wake up. And then we see of course Maze have her nightmare. The man in black is there after he apparently killed all these Indian raiders. Then comes in, she wakes herself up and finds herself on the surgery table. So although she had been put in sleep mode to have something corrected in her abdomen apparently, she actually uses the trick she taught Clementine and says three, two, one, and wakes up in the facility unaware of this new world and what the hell is going on and picks up a scalpel scared to death and runs through the facility and we see the basement level where they clean up all these bodies after they get shot every day. But I found it odd that they didn't have some kind of verbal command to just shut her down like have a deep and dreamless slumber that would get her back into sleep mode but the point being it was a bad idea to use verbal commands on these androids but now she will likely have memories of the real world and really start questioning things and this is after they upped her aggressiveness anyway within the storyline because apparently She's not getting enough business. We see Lee, the main storyteller, he has a new narrative he wants to introduce as far as a new storyline for people to experience and Dr. Ford shuts that down. We see him actually go into the park himself. I thought this was really cool and it shows him actually playing God here because he goes up into the park through this cool little elevator out in the middle of nowhere. He runs into what's apparently another host kid and then he controls a rattlesnake like God. You know, it couldn't touch him. He was just waving his hand. So anyway, it looks like the virus is spreading, so to speak, as far as this little phrase. And of course, Maze shows us that she's learned to wake herself up from these nightmares or dreams. And of course, that's when they're in maintenance mode, apparently. Therefore, they're learning to override their verbal commands, which is not a good thing for the people that created them. And then, of course, at the end of this episode, we see Dr. Ford go back into the park again. And he goes back with Bernard this time and says, I have my own storyline that I've been working on for months. And we see the black steeple again with the cross on it. So it looks like he's going to introduce religion into this world. So on top of all the problems they're having with the actual hosts and them, you know, starting to retain memories and become more sentient and artificial intelligence being born here, now he's going to introduce another layer of religion as he tries to play God. So this brings into question a lot of morality and that type of thing. And this is a very cool thing about this show. They were created by man. Now they're starting to come around and understand what they really are. And we'll see more and more of that as of course as the show progresses. They're going to start to revolt obviously and fight their own creators for freedom because that's the basic of any sentient being. It's just being able to live free without being under control. They want to get out of the matrix. We have a lot more questions about the man in black. Is he an android because he seemingly can't be touched by real bullets? Is he a paying customer like we seem to think he is? because he did say he's been coming there for 30 years, he paid a lot of money. So he is a very cool character because you just really don't know. And you know, on one hand you can say for sure he's a guest, on the other hand you can say for sure he's an android because apparently bullets bounce off of him and don't even leave holes in his clothes. Now, that brings into question how the guns work in this world. We know that every other host gets shot and they bleed and have to be cleaned up in the basement as we saw but he apparently has these bullets bounce off of him. So how does that physically work in this world? If a guest is going through a storyline where they're getting shot at by somebody, they just don't get shot, the bullets just somehow don't work and it just ricochets off, that's physically impossible. So the gun has to be real or not real and it looks to me like they are because in every other instance, there is a wound, there is blood, and as we saw, they do clean them up in a basement, remove all the bullets and repair their wounds to put them back out in their storylines or is he an android that thinks he's a human? Great episode overall, dug a little bit deeper. It gave us a little bit more of the guest perspective of what they go through. What did you think about it overall? What do you think about the morality questions? What do you think about the show in general? Does it make you wanna watch even more now, now that we're introduced to more and more plot lines and a little bit more character development as far as the programmers, the people that run the park and the androids themselves and their own agendas once they become fully self-aware. So anyway guys, I'll leave it short and sweet. I'm a little bit behind this week, I apologize. So I'll leave it there and look forward to the discussion in the comments below. Were you impressed by episode too was it just okay were you glad to see the guest perspective as far as what they experienced coming into the park and what do you think bernard's up to as far as his ultimate goal here controlling dolores where he apparently is talking to her secretly and of course making her erase those event logs her routine has now changed she finds a gun now i will say really quickly before i go the odd thing for me about the gun was is why is that gun special there's probably 50 guns in her house just like 
every house in the South. The point being, what's so special about that gun and why did somebody bury it right there and who's it supposed to be used against? Or is it a gun that can hurt the man in black? So anyway guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, thank you for all the support as usual. Remember, smokescreen shirts are now available. We have more designs coming, so check the link in the description below. Be sure to give me a like and a share if you dig what I do here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.